refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. Um, um, welcome you all to this service, to this memorial service of our brother, our friend, um, the man we loved and the man we knew, Mr. Juan Martino, um, who today, on the 25th of February 2022, is his final service or a chance for us to say goodbye. I've often heard people use the words celebration to define the reason why we would be gathered here today. Maybe you've heard the words too, we are here to celebrate the life, we are here to celebrate the life. There's a Salvation Army hymn where in one of the verses, the writer of the hymn says these words, you have ripped away this thing, you have torn away this person that I love. And then he says, this writer says, as if speaking to God, teach me always that your will should be done. In the Bible, Psalm 46, verse 10a, stands side by side among other well-known verses. And this psalm says, Be still and know that I am God. Yes, we wish to celebrate the life of Mr. Martino. But we are gathered here because God, our Alpha and Omega, the one who writes the story of our life, started the story of Mr. Martino, has seen it fit to bring it to a conclusion. His will, God's will, has been fulfilled. So I see on the program as we begin today, we are going to sing together a hymn called Amazing Grace. Um, if you have a program, please open it up so that we may sing together Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Let us stand as we sing together.
gathered here this morning, I have not had the honor of meeting Mr. Martino in his life here on earth. But I'm sure most of us have some memory that is embedded in our heart. I'd like to take the opportunity to perhaps get into his feet and imagine what his life might have been like. Before we get into our time of eulogies by Miguel, Gabby and Jacques. I, Joao Manuel Pereira Martino, opened my eyes for the first time when God allowed me to see this world. This world was a new place for me with new adventures. It was a place where I could be and experience life with all of those who would encounter me. Yet, as a baby, I did not realize that this world was my oyster, oyster and it presented me with a, a, a whole load of wonderful experiences. On this road of life, as Mr. Martino, I grew up, I learned new things, and I had the chance to teach others what I had learned. I learned to care for others who were in need. I loved and I received love. I shared in meaningful relationships and was blessed with the gift of children there were sad days that made me cry, and then there were great days of joy. My ears were happy to hear the rhythmic sounds of the king of rock and roll, of course, Elvis Presley, and also Mr. Robbie Williams. I dreamed of days in the future with my love, and enjoying the sunset, eating olives and cheese as we watched the sun go down. Yet. Those days are no longer in my reach. They say sometimes you never know the value of someone until they are gone. On this day that the Lord chose, I closed my eyes for the final time, never to open them again. Today, as you think of me, I am taking a final look back to welcome your words of farewell and to say my own goodbyes. I'm on a new road now. One day we may see each other again, but for now, please forgive one another, love one another, and live your life to the fullest, because it is a gift after all. I'd like now to call upon Miguel, Gabby, and Jacques to share the eulogy. I never did I ever think things would end the way they did. You were the proudest man I ever met. You had your own unique way of dealing with everything that was put in front of you. I will forever cherish the memories, fun times, and the countless hours messing around in the garden and garage. I know you're up above looking down on us, extremely proud of what you both achieved. I promise to be the change that I love you forever and I mean that. I'd like to just close with a song and a poem. I could write a million pages, but, it wouldn't, but I would never be unable to say how much I loved and missed him every single day. I will remember all he taught me. I'm hurt, I'm sad. But I know that he will send me answers and he will always be my dad. We were apart, we were apart for quite some time. That can never change. I have forgiven that and I hope you did the same. 
there are moments of experience of deja vu, especially when I'm thinking of you. I get transported to memories of the past, and I think to myself, why didn't those good times last? No words were spoken, <coughs> no farewell words spoken. There was no opportunity to say goodbye. You are gone before I knew it, and only God knows why. My heart will ache with sadness, and my secret tears will overflow. What it means to love you, no one will ever know. But I now know that you won't. But I now know that you won't need to mourn for you no more. To remember the good times and forgive what has gone by. Since you will never be forgotten, I pledge to you today. The hole in my heart is where you will always stay. I love you, Dad. I hope you know that. Neither of us said that enough. I pray that you know at peace and resting up above. I think of you every day. It keeps the heart and keep the pain away. I write your name in my heart and that is where to always stay. There is a place in my heart no one will ever fall. I love you, Dad. Always have and always will. Check forms if you know the business. Then you call us to his office. Say, guys, you will never do that. Normally, if you don't see eye to eye, come to the office, we talk. And there's one thing that I really liked about John. John was a very hard person, but at the same time, at the back of his mind, there was kindness. The only thing that he was actually not disliking, if you walk on his lane, if you are on this lane, then you get a very better pet job side of John. But on the whole, he was a very, very kind person. I want to quote this scripture. This is a scripture that I'm contributing to the family, his kids. The scripture goes like this. It's in John 16, verse 33. I'm not preaching. Most of, I'm not even a pastor. I'm just a factory worker. Simple factory worker. It raises us. On earth, that's John 16, verse 33, if I'm not mistaken. On earth, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, because I have conquered the world. John has gone through a lot of stuff. I remember at one stage he was in Mozambique. I think should have been the boy or the girl who got himself injured. That disrupted the whole journey that was there. They had to come back. They had to come back with a, the kid having injured. It messed up the whole, family, the, whole, the, whole, the whole journey. And from there, it was setbacks after setbacks, setbacks after setbacks. Some of them, if I just mentioned, it might really open up wounds, which I wouldn't really like to go there. Until at the last stage at the factory. At the factory, when I found him last week, he said, but I died and I came back. Then I said, John, what do you mean you died and came back? Then he said, I was in a certain situation whereby I actually seen myself having died, but they resuscitated me back in, into life. Then I said, John, let me stop talking to you telephonically. We must arrange a time whereby myself and Zozo will come and have a chat with you. 
Then he agreed. That was last week when he came back from the hospital. He was still having that eagerness or a wish that at one stage he'll go back to the factory and join his fellows. We had a factory, Inter John had a factory where we are about plus minus about, about 19, including John and myself, comprising mainly of ladies. Those people were so much beloved in his heart. It's a great pity that they were never granted an opportunity to come and say the last bye-bye to John. It's unfortunate, but I think they would have graced, they would have wished to grace the moment. A very intelligent person. Among the things that he said that he was eager to teach people, truly speaking, John was a great teacher. Yvonne, as our direct, uh, you and so, uh, as, as one of our directors, she's here, she can really stand up, Yvonne should see you. <laughs> Look at them, don't be scared. Look at them. Maybe this guy. Fine. Yvonne, while she was still as operating as one of the uh, uh, salespersons, I think she's one person who can attest to that that Ron was prepared to share information with every mo mo body. Towards the brink of a situation when. Uh, how long can I speak? Because I like talking. I like talking. If you let me to talk, I'll talk for another two hours until it gets, uh, gets angry. And uh, the, around, the, uh, around between, around the, uh, uh, around the 20 something, there was a situation whereby asbestos was faced off. Meanwhile, asbestos was faced off, a number of jobs were going to be, uh, 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 people are going to lose their jobs. John, I don't know, whatever wisdom got. I think God might have visited him because among the whole company, there was nobody, I'm saying it again, there was nobody who was able or who was going to be able to, did, to do what John did. He established a number of styles, about four or five of them. Those styles, they became a lifeblood of the company. If those styles were never introduced, a number of people would have lost jobs. A number of people who have lost jobs. Why? Because John loved the people. John loved the team. He didn't call them his employees. He said they were a team. He said it was a family. John will always miss him. John was a very hard person, but being hard a person, but at the, at the end of it all, there was that little fairness. He was hard, but at the same time being fair. I think a number of people can bring me up. John was a very tough person. But being tough, people have rubbed shoulders with him, they know who John is, but at least you'd sit down and reconsider normal distance and uh, there was a little bit in his heart of kindness. We'll sadly miss John, because the thing that I want to say in, in ending, John was a wonderful person. We'll always miss John, myself and Zozo Zozo is his uh, acting foreman for now will always meet them, Sarah and everybody, and you, uh, in fact, all of us guys, I'm sorry, I can't just be pointing to all of you, but guys, will sadly miss John. He always had wish that one time, at a particular stage, he'll go back to the fete. Unfortunately, death became very much a, an enemy which snatched John away from us. May his soul rest in peace. In ending, I'm going to sing a chorus. You thought I was finished. <laughs> <laughs> this chorus, I'm only going to sing a one stanza of a chorus. I've wandered far away from God. God, I'm coming home. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home. Nevermore to roam Open wide thine arms of love Lord, I'm coming home May his soul rest in peace Good afternoon, everyone. No one knew John like we did. John was a difficult person, but the most beautiful person there was. We spent nights together. 
we came together and believe you me, he loved each and every one of you. John, my brother, best friend to me now. You will be best friend. Zazo, you hear me? He thought so much of you. He loved you. Believe you me, he always spoke about you and about everyone else. Let's celebrate you all, forget all the bullshit, and this life is too short. God bless you all and the family and everyone that attended. Be blessed, my brother. And from Kathleen on the program, I see a wonderful message. I think, can I read it? I think it might be hard for her to read. Um, how do I say our final goodbye? You were such a wonderful person with a pure heart, misunderstood by many. Regardless of your demons, you were loved. We had so many dreams sitting on our stoop, eating olives and, che and cheese, watching the sunset. I will miss our times together in the kitchen and our weekend rise. The Friday takeaways, listening to Elvis Presley and Robbie Williams on Alum Radio. You were my best friend and soulmate. Loved you with all my heart. Thank you for loving me. Till we meet again, love, Kathleen. Can you please sing that chorus again for the I have wandered far away from God. Lord, I'm coming home. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to roam home. Open wide thine arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. I hope that brings us comfort to know that he's coming home to a wonderful welcome. He's, he's, he's at peace. He's resting in a better place, we often say, because this world is full of so many tribulations, as um, the gentleman who worked with him said. He quoted a verse that reminds us that this world is full of so much trouble, but it's wonderful to just rest, to just know that you are home. Thank you to all of those who have shared a bit more about his life from his sons to colleagues to family members. Um, we hope that those words will linger in our hearts as we remember this wonderful man. Our Bible reading comes from the book of Romans 8 verse 35 to verse 39. It reads as follows. <clears throat> Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The theme of this morning's Bible message that I'd like to share with you all is 
what shall separate us from the love of God? We are still in the month of love, as we know, and we have seen a lot of love shared amongst us, from chocolates to flowers to music to songs and so on. Some went for dinners, some went for lunches. Others, single like me, did not, unfortunately, get any. But the love of God, right, keeps us going. It feels good to be loved. It feels really good. I'm not a scientist or a biologist, but I, I can imagine that there's something in your body that happens, the good endorphins or whatever they call them, that happen when you receive love. Your whole mood changes, the atmosphere changes when you realize that there's somebody out there who cares about you. This time, I would like us to focus not on the love that we receive from human beings, but from the love of God. If I asked you to stand here on this road where this funeral parlor is situated and to point out to me which of the people passing by are separated from the love of God. It might be hard for you to say this one or that one, or you may feel an unfair question that I may ask from you. Maybe you may feel I am judging, asking you to judge someone else. But I'd like to remind you this morning that God's love is relentless. God's love is everlasting. It's often in situations like these or others that cause us to step away from God's love because we want to ask him questions. We want to ask him, why do you cause this person to suffer? Why is that one in pain? Why did you take this one away from me? Why is this situation happening in our lives? And I remember um, this week earlier, I was driving on the streets of Johannesburg and as I was driving, I could see homelessness. I could see brokenness. I could see broken buildings. Places that I used to go when I was young are demolished, are destroyed, are empty. And it made me ask, God, what is happening with our South Africa? Why are we in this situation? God, these questions. But we know that God is all-knowing and all-seeing. And God is all-hearing. And God is the one who is able to bring about goodness, who is able to bring about change, who is able to turn darkness into light, who is able to turn emptiness and fill it with his love. And this afternoon I may ask the question, who, or not I ask the question, but the Bible asks the question, who shall separate us from the love of God? Maybe you have an answer. I'm moving away a bit from the book of Romans in this question, who shall separate us from this love of God, and tell us, or I would like to share with you some stories that are found in the Bible about people who felt somewhat separated from God's love. This story is found in the book of Luke that talks about lost things, the lost coin, the lost sheep, but the story I'm focusing on is the story of the lost son. It's a long story, so I'm going to summarize it because we do not want to be here this whole afternoon. But there was a father with two sons. And the young son says one day, Father, give me all of my inheritance. And the father, all loving, I don't know why, but he says, here is your inheritance. And he obliged to his, father, to his son's request. And so the son takes his wealth, he takes his millions or however much it must have been, and he goes and he lives his new life. He goes and he separates himself from the father, from the family, and he goes and he spends. He goes and he buys and he does this and he does all of those things with his money until the time of famine comes and he has spent and he has done all of this and he has nothing left and he's stuck. Remember, he separated himself from his family. He separated himself from his father. And in this point of being lost and frustrated and hungry and feeling neglected, the son remembers, I have a father. And so he decides to make his journey back home. And he makes his journey back home. And the Bible says, before he even reached, while he was there on the hill coming, his father sees his son and he runs and he welcomes him. And he shows him that love that we all long for. Because the love of the father is the same as the love of God. Even when we have taken all of what we create ourselves, when God sees us coming back, he says, welcome, my son. Welcome, my daughter. Welcome, I have a place prepared for you. The father who welcomed his son back home 
hugged him and kissed him and later threw a party to say, my son who was lost is now is found. He was gone and now he is home. It is wonderful to experience a love like that. The second story I want to share is a story of Naomi, which is found in the book of Ruth. If you read the Bible, Naomi was married with two sons. Perfect life, right? You know how we picture our lives. I'm going to school. I'm going to university. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have my... That perfect life. Naomi had her perfect life with her two sons. And the interesting thing about Naomi is that nothing extraordinary had been written about her. She wasn't great in any way that we are told. She wasn't maybe had extra talents or whatever, but her story is included in the Bible. And so she starts off, or we meet her at the point where she has a husband and two sons, and her sons are married, and then her husband dies, a point of pain. Ten years later, her two sons die, back to the land where she came from. And when she arrived, as we all, perhaps if you have worked and now are living in a different city, when you go back home, for us um, Zulu, Kosa, Tswana people, there's always a home. And there's always that sense of, I'm going back home. Even if you don't have a house there, but the people will know you and welcome you. And so Naomi decides to go back home to be welcomed. And the people welcome her. Oh, isn't that Naomi? Oh, isn't that Naomi? And she says, stop. My name is no longer Naomi. Call me Mara because the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. So Naomi left, or, to, or Naomi um, responds as someone who was separated from the love of God. How can God take my husband and my children? How can he? He has dealt with me so badly that I am changing my name. I went away from this home full, but I came back empty. That is what her words are. I came I went away full with a family, with dreams and hopes, and I come back to my home empty. Maybe someone here today feels like that, feels empty, feels like someone has robbed something from them, robbed their hopes, their dreams, or taken something away from them. Maybe in this room, or as we are gathered here today, someone may feel empty and shattered, or feel like they are struggling from day to day. How can the Lord who is this God? I don't want him. I don't believe in him. He cannot allow my life to be like this. Often or at some point in our lives, whether it be for a month or a day, or a week, we may feel separated from God. We may feel all alone in this world. It's not easy to draw near to Jesus at the point of pain. But this afternoon, as I conclude, I would like to share with you the lyrics of a writer who writes a song, He Knows My Name. The He is God. He talks about Him as a Father. He says, He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and He hears me when I call. In Romans, the book, or when we started, remember the verse was, Who shall separate me from the love of God? We talked about the lost son, who was separated and came back home. We talked about Naomi, who felt separated as she was back home. But now we ask, as a, Roman, as a writer of Romans asks, he lists the possibilities of things that can separate us from God's love. He says, but he says, but he writes them in saying that, although these things exist, although these things can affect my life, but they cannot separate me from God's love. He says, neither death nor life, neither angels or rulers, neither things present or things to come, neither height nor death or anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God. We are the ones who walk away from God. God doesn't walk away from us. We step away, we run away, we move away, but he's always there, like that father, willing to bring us back home. At this moment, before we listen to a song um, that I'd like us to reflect upon before we pray, I'd like us to read, I don't have enough of, but I, there, there are some papers that I gave out um, that have this verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 
verse 4 to 8a that talks about the love of God. Can we all read it together? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. To Kathleen and to the family and to everyone here, the love of God is available for you today, tomorrow, and forever. It will bring you comfort, it will bring you hope, it will bring you peace, it will bring you everything you need in your life. I'd like us to just listen to the song before we pray. I have amazing He's born my heart Oh, before even time began My life was in His hands Father, we come before you this afternoon and we can only but say thank you for the life of Mr. John Martino. You have allowed him to live amongst us. You have allowed him to be our leader, to be our teacher, to be our friend. You have allowed him to listen. You have allowed him to share. You have allowed him to go through many experiences, some of which are possibly well felt, might have felt beyond what he could handle. But you were with him because you are faithful. In your word, we, rem we are reminded that you will never leave or forsake us. We may felt abandoned. We may felt left by uh, Mr. Martino, who we will no longer see. But we are not left by you, Jesus. You are still with us. You will still walk and talk with us. You will still show us your mighty hand in times of struggle. We continue, Jesus, at this moment to take the opportunity to pray for the family, mostly, even for friends and neighbors and others. Perhaps some couldn't make it here this afternoon, wherever they are thinking of this day, thinking of this final farewell of Mr. Martino, I pray that you would bring them an immense amount of comfort, bandage their bleeding hearts, that you would help them to stand strong beyond this point, knowing that we cannot have a say over the people, over the lives of others. We can only trust that you will keep them safe in your arms, Lord Jesus. Continue to protect us and may this day be a reminder as we have spoken about your love, that we will continue to be loved by you. 
no matter what we do, no matter how many times we may sin, no matter how many times we may fall, no matter how many times we may feel like a failure, but we can always lift our eyes to Jesus and we can know that our help comes from you and we can know that we are loved unconditionally by you. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for the service, God. I pray that the service will be a reminder, will, be, will assist us in finding closure as we say goodbye. It is never easy to say goodbye, Jesus, but we know that you are the one who will give us strength or who is able to help us to get through these tough moments. We pray that you will continue to be with the family in the days to come. Perhaps now they may feel surrounded by us, but in days to come, they may feel the loneliness of the absence of the father, of the friend, of the person they loved so much. But in those moments, may you show up or bring someone else in their lives who will bring them that comfort and that sense of reassurance that they will need. We thank you, God. May you help us. I pray in this room right now, if anyone wants to turn their lives to you and say, Jesus is my savior, may you give them the courage to do so. With their eyes closed and no one else watching or no one else um, invading their privacy, I pray that in their hearts they would make that promise and that they would take on that offer to have you as their Lord and Savior. And amongst anything, may we all walk out of here with hearts full of forgiveness and hearts full of love. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like us to stand. As God, our Father, has taken João Manuel Lopez Pereira Martino back into his hands, we now commit his life back to the Father, trusting or believing that um, his body shall be reunited with the Father until the time of Jesus' return. May we close our eyes for the benediction. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is his work that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Just gonna take some of the chairs after that side, then you have to set up the coffee here.